Matthew 12, 38. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees, who he's just dealt with, answer, answer means, you know, he just gave them about the tongue, about the mouth, the unpardonable sin. Their answer to him is, Master, Rabbi, we would see a sign from thee. They didn't get it. Now, see a sign from thee. Go back to verse 24. But the Pharisees heard it. They said, this fellow, Jesus, does not cast out devils, but by Beelzebub, the prince of the devils. So, we want to see a sign from you, but we believe you're of the workings of Satan. They're going to have a hard time in the tribulation period when Satan manifested in the flesh as the Antichrist and the false prophets are going about with their miracles. That's going to drive the Pentecostals crazy. You just call this guy, or say this guy, Jesus, you're doing the works of Satan, Beelzebub. Now we want to see a sign. Do you relate the two? <laughs> I mean... The, ba the, the Baptists today, you know, they get the truth. Oh, Jesus, will you bless the, the, the workings of the, of the world in us? It's not the world, you know, we do it for Jesus. Now watch what he does. Now we are transiting away from the Jews. As we're getting closer and closer in Matthew to Calvary, we're actually getting closer and closer to the Gentile, but there's going to be no church yet. The true transition over to the Gentiles is the Ethiopian eunuch and Cornelius, and then the calling of Paul. But watch what Jesus does here. He is going to throw a monkey wrench into the, the machinery. But he answered, Jesus answered and said unto him, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Well, he just told him, If the tree is evil, and the fruit is evil, if the treasure is evil, then the heart is evil and corrupt. <laughs> he picked up right where they didn't listen. you got to catch that when you're soul winning. Because they're not going to hear what you say. And yet you got to drive it in further. Now, in Corinthians, Paul says the Jews seek after a sign. That's allowed. Okay, but... They want a dog and pony show. These Pharisees and scribes would love today's vacation Bible. Because there's no Bible. Oh, we get caught in candy. We would pin the tail on, the, on John the Baptist or pin the head on John the Baptist. And I got so many things. I get a tootsie roll and we get to go ride on the sled and go bounce on the bouncy house. That's what, uh, well, it's not Harry, but uh, I think it's Harry. When he found out from Pilate that Jesus is there, oh, he man, he's like, all right, I'm going to see him do some things. I'm going to see him put, a, put an act up. Do a Christian magic show. I know two Christian families that do that. And a pastor of both those churches and a missionary that supports that. I know three families that do the mission, uh, that do Christian magic. I want to see a show. Now the Jews, the Hebrews, were founded upon signs. 
When Moses showed up to him and he turns the water into blood, he sticks his hand inside the shirt, though this is this one's not recorded, and comes out leprous, and he takes his rod, he throws it on the ground, and becomes a serpent. Those are signs. The star of David, the star of Riphlam, is not the national symbol of Israel. It's either water to blood, leprosy of the hand healed, or the rod turned into a snake. Or a burning bush. A sign that God gave Moses. That's allowed for the Jews. And I'm not going to say the church can't do it. The Christian can't do it. There are some cases where you've got to call upon God and say, God, you know, you got to show me something. I am completely in the dark. And it, that depends on the situation. I'm not going to lay no ties on it. He says, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Boy, he just slammed him. And there shall be no sign given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. Hey! There's Greek. Hebrews Jonah. Hebrew has an H and Greek has an S. You just learned Hebrew and Greek today. And you understood completely what I just said. For as Jonas was three days and three nights, that sounds familiar, in the whale's belly, not a nasal cavity, not the upper lip, as there are videos out there in television programs that, you know, humans have been found in the nasal cavity of the... No, 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 no. God said whale's of the belly. Why three days and three nights? Martha gave you the answer. As the fourth day or night, he stinketh. The body begins to decay. Unless they chemically fly your body. So you can have an open casket service. But usually your body starts decaying. Jonah died. Okay, I don't care what you believe. Jonah died. He was resurrected three days and three nights later. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Did Jesus die? Yes. Was he buried in the tomb? Yes. Was he resurrected? Yes. Do you believe in Jonah dies, went to hell, and was resurrected? No. Then you don't believe in Jesus, the gospel. Because Jesus just said, what happened to Jonah is going to happen to me. And if Jonah didn't die, then Jesus didn't die. What are you going to do with that? And I've heard out, you know, a famous man that goes around preaching the gospel and out of his pulpit, not him, one of his students got up there in his pulpit in Florida and said, Jonah didn't die. I wonder what that guy got for a grade. I wonder if that guy gets a diploma. As Jonah was three days and three nights in earth, as so shall the Son of Man be three days. Hey, Jesus wasn't in the well's belly. And neither was the soul of, of Jonah. His body was in the well's belly. Jesus' body was in the tomb, but their soul was somewhere else. So, I mean, the teaching that Jonah didn't die, that's the Jehovah's, you know, teaching of hell is the grave. You know better. All right, now here we go. Here's the kick in the pan. I mean, you understand what we just read now. You don't want to believe it. That's fine. You go on in your ignorance and don't expect God to, to answer and help you when you reject the word of God. Don't even go into the modern body. Now watch this one. You ready for this nugget? This nugget's so good. This nugget's like, can I have the honey barbecue? I don't know if I want the sweet and sour with this one. And you know what? If they caught it, it would have been sweet and sour. I don't think they caught it. The men of Nineveh. Who are the men of Nineveh? Gentiles. 
who did the Jews hate? Jonah didn't even want to go into Nineveh. He went the other way. That's how he ended up in the whale's belly. So he attacks the Pharisees and the scribes who just called him the devil. And he says, you're evil and you're adulterous. And he's going to show them the examples of belief. And he names a Gentile group of people that were just absolute barbarians in their actions. Of what they did with the war prisoners in the war dead. I have been told that they will bury a man alive in the dirt. They will skin a man alive. They will let the man be left out to rot. David's out on patrol, and his city, the city he was at was taken captive, and his wives and the soldiers' wives and, and was all taken. They go after them, and they come across this man who was sick. I mean, they weren't Ninevites, but they left the guy on the side of the road just because he was sick. There was no hospital plan. There was no health care plan. There was no calling out sick plan. You're sick? All right, bye. And that was light. So the men of Nineveh, Gentiles, sweet and sour sauce, shall rise in judgment with this generation. So when these men in the time of Jesus are standing at the great white throne judgment, there's no church, no judgment seat of Christ. Saved people can be at the great white throne judgment. When they're standing at the great white throne of judgment, God's going to call the Ninevites up. And even if they're, I mean, this, this is weird. What if they've gone off in the lake of fire? Or what if God holds and holds them off to judge his people for the lake of fire? But he's going to call the Ninevites that hurt Wayman. No. The Ninevites repented and got right with God. They will be going to heaven. Who? Gentiles. Can you imagine that for, for a Hebrew? Going to be Gentiles? Yeah. These men are not going to the lake of fire. The entire city is recorded. The king repented in sackcloth. And because they heard the preaching, they shall condemn it. He's talking to them. Going to condemn them. Because they repented at the preaching of Jonas. They heard. We'll look at the message. I'll tell you the message in a moment. But if they heard Jonah or Jonas and they repented at that, brother, you got, and behold, a greater than Jonas is he. You've got God manifested right there in the flesh preaching to you, and you have not received him. Now, you stay where you are. I'm going to go over to the book of Jonah real quick. I'm going to read a couple things out of Schofield's notes. The note for the opening of the book of Jonah. Historical character of the man Jonah is about for by Jesus Christ, Matthew 12. As also that his preservation in the great fish was a sign or type of the Lord's own tomb and resurrection. So that means both of them have to die. Both are miraculous and both are equally credible. The man in Jonah was bigoted Jew, unwilling to testify to the Gentile city and angry that God had spared it. <laughs> Go back to our Jonah study. Jo uh, Jonah. Nineveh, Nineveh, Nineveh repented, got right. Jonah is angry. <laughs> sort of like the attitude of the Pharisees and the scribes and all that when Jesus heals somebody. Oh, he does it by, oh, oh, 
Oh, boy, did he just give him sweet. No, he didn't give him sweet. He gave him sour sauce. You're acting just like Jonah. And the Gentiles are rejoicing. Ah, man, Jesus, I mean, I don't know if Jesus wore boots. I don't think he did. But, man, he just gave him a big, fat army boot right up to behind. Okay? Now, we're not done reading. Two more things to read here. Now, the message that Jonah preached, yet 40 days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. Bye. I'll go sit underneath my tree. Did Jonah heal? No. Did Jonah cleanse the lepers? No. Did Jonah call any devils out? No. Did Jonah raise any dead? No. Were there Gentiles in those, in those predicaments? Yes. And if Nineveh acted to the reaction to Noah, I'm Noah, Jonah, I don't know if I'm going to say Noah, if they reacted to Jonah, man, how should they act with God in the flesh? Doing these miracles that you just said was the devil. Now, number two, or three, no miracle of scripture has called for so much unbelief. What's the, now the Lord had prepared a great fish, Jesus says, well, to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish, or whale, three days and three nights. Schofield has a note that no miracle of scripture, I just read you what Jesus just told them, has called for so much unbelief. If you don't believe Jonah 117, you don't believe Matthew 12. And do you know how many pastors and, and Sunday school teachers and students that go to the, the Bible Institute and stuff like that, and they get up in the book, and you know how many of them will, will open up the book of Matthew for their teaching and deny Matthew 12 and Jonah 1? I ain't done yet. The issue is not between the, the doubter and the ancient record, but between the doubter that's who don't believe this story. And the Lord Jesus Christ. Matthew 12, 39 and 40. It's not Jonah we don't believe. It's Jesus. And anybody who does not believe, you just deny the very thing that saves you, the gospel. Now, I'm not going to say it's the unpardonable sin, but man, you should. So what Jesus tells them, not only Gentiles that get saved and believe by the preaching of a Jew, that's sweet and sour right there. But that they repented and got right with God and judgment was withheld by Jehovah. Ooh, that's getting a little less sweet now. And that Jonah, the Jew, had an attitude against the people getting saved. But now we got pure sour sauce. And he may be preaching to scribes and Pharisees, both some Sadducees, maybe. And they don't even believe Jonah. As the scholars today. And if you don't believe that. Verse 41. And behold a greater than Jonas or Jonah. It's Greek. Is here. All right, you don't believe the count of Jonah? Jesus just told you there was a Jonah. Jesus just told you it was a whale. Jesus has told you three days and three nights. If you don't believe Jonah, you just called Jesus a liar. Saved 
or lost. I wouldn't want to be in your shoes at either one of Jones if you go to. Because let me give you one quote, Christian. Out of the mouth of Jesus himself. And I'll tell you the, the verse after I say it. Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. John 14. And there are several places in Scripture says that God, Jesus, cannot, will not, is unable to tell a lie. And if you say that whole story of a whale is fantasy, whatever you say, I'm telling you, it came out of a famous preacher's pulpit. As I sat there, and he has his students get up there and do pulpit time, and that guy got up there wearing bow ties. with two or three children and a wife and said, I'm going to say no again, Jonah did not die. Then you're saying Jesus didn't die. And if Jesus didn't die, you don't have the gospel. That's being taught in churches. Baptist churches. Okay, so that's a Gentile story. You think that made them mad if, if they got it? A lot of times they didn't even get it. I mean, sometimes, you know, it's so funny. My wife would laugh. I would be preaching the streets. I would use sarcasm against somebody who said something or whatever. And the funny thing is I will say something, and they completely goes right over their head. It's like, I, was, I mean, one thing, people, they, they'll be wearing weird outfits or something like that. This just look totally weird. I say, you know what you need? I say, you need a King James Bible and a full-length mirror. And they just keep on walking. <laughs> That's one of the things with sarcasm. Sometimes you don't get it. But there it goes. Now, we're not done. The Queen of the South, you want, you remember where she came from? Well, you don't know. Okay, that's fine. We're talking about shall rise up in judgment with this generation, just as the, the people of Nineveh, shall condemn it like the people of Nineveh, for she came from the outermost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. What queen came to Solomon to hear his wisdom? It was the queen of Sheba. Is Sheba a Israelite city, or is it a... It's a Gentile city. Oh, boy. Give me something that's really sour to eat. And Jesus is saying, Jesus gave him sweet and removed the sweet sour sauce. Now, you think of the most sourful thing you ever put in your mouth, food. I can't think of anything except for those candies. And he said, look, here's some sweet and sour sauce. Queen of South, here's sour. Gentile number two. Gentile number two. Here's Gentile people, verse 41. Gentile person, verse 42. The Ninevites, plural, the Queen of South, is going to stand at your great white throne judgment, and they're going to condemn you, the Jew, God's people. That's kind of saying the Ethiopian eunuch, Cornelius, and Paul, who's a Jew, and Peter, who's a Jew, and James, who's a Jew, are going to stand at their judgment and say, hey, we were Jews. I mean, excuse me, we were Hebrews. No, I got to mess up. Cornelius and the Ethiopian eunuch are Gentiles. That's what I wanted to say are going to stand before the Hebrews at the great white throne and say, hey, we believe in Jesus. All I had was Isaiah 53. And it wasn't even Isaiah 53. It was just a piece of a scroll. Cornelius, your Catholic of the, of the book of Acts, didn't even have no Bible. And an angel told him, go get Peter. 
Pre Peter preaches the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus. Well, if you don't believe in Jonah, then there was no preaching. Of and you know what happens in today's modern Baptist churches? Salvation is say this prayer, and there's no death of Jesus. There's no repentance. Just say this prayer. Just be go happy, go lucky. Just put money in the plate, and we'll run to Malachi and show you how and why you should do it. And there are people out of the Baptist church. I'm talking to the Baptists. There are people out of the Baptist churches today. Maybe members, maybe visitors, maybe they go into the fellowship, maybe they had happy go lucky chicken. Or the banana pudding. They had an or will die and wake up in hell, and what on earth happened to me? It's what we call easy believism. Well, you don't want to talk about a dead man. That's gross. And who's going to believe that? I hope you did. If you didn't. So the queen of the south, Sheba, shall rise up and judge this generation like the Ninevites, plural. And shall condemn it like the Ninevites. For she came from the outer parts of the earth to hear the wisdom. Of you know why they're coming to Jesus? You healed on the Sabbath day. You peeled some corn on the Sabbath day. You do that by Beelzebub. Look what your disciples do. You guys don't fast like you. You don't wash your hands like you. Wah, 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 wah. And what Jesus is saying, that Gentile came for wisdom. You come to give me a hard time. Later on in the God, they're going to search out Jesus to try to catch him. And there's one point where they say to destroy him. Never mind kill him. Destroy him. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. So Jesus told us there was a Jonah, Jonas, Greek. Hey! Jesus said... The story of the book of Jonah is real and factual. Matter of fact, I am going to do exactly what Jonah did. But I'm going to do it under my own power. He also said there was a queen of Sheba. I would th probably think 2 Samuel. She came to Solomon. So there is a Solomon. That story in the Bible is true. He just authorized and validated four, well, three people and a group of people, Ninevites, and two stories of the Bible. And if people don't believe Jonah, well, you've got to call the question, did they believe the Queen of the South story? And there was no miracle done. She just came like, wow, look at this place. <clears throat> the gold and the Middle East sun of Israel. <laughs> Man, that temple shined miles and miles and miles. I, I, I don't know. I would call it maybe a light on a hilltop. Yeah, you know, that's just Christians. Taking the Bible out of context. The light that was on the hilltop was the Jews in the golden temple. You ever see today the, the pictures of Jerusalem? Can you not miss the, the dumb of the rock dome? You can't miss it. If the, pitch, if the camera is facing Jerusalem, you must see the dumb of the rock. Can you imagine a city built for God, by God, all of gold? 
You would have to call Joseph Smith and get his sunglasses as you got closer and closer. And you think you're the light of a city. You're a city? A city has more than one person. Oh, you know, we got, okay, you got a thousand people in your church. They're not all lights. They're all broken bows. All right. Now, verses 43, 44, and 45 is an example of reformation. You may say, well, what is reformation? This is the truth of Reformation. Now let me tell you before we read this. The Lutheran Church is a cleaned up Catholic Church. Now it is the Catholic Church with the name Luther. It's an Italian church in Germany. They've got the sacraments, minus a couple of them. They do exactly what the Catholics do, but it's not transfiguration, whatever that word is they call for Jesus. It's something else. It's the same thing. Now, there is more to Luther being saved by the blood than the Pope being saved by whatever the Pope he does. All right, there's that difference. And I laugh because there's a Lutheran church right by where we live. We used to, we used to drive by it and they're out in the side, come and see Jesus. Like, really? I don't think Jesus go in there. Especially your pancake meals and all that. Not what not what's going on in the Lutheran church today. But when the unclean spirit is going out of a man, I, I, I don't know where he... Where. The Pharisees believed, do, 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 do. Don't do, don't do, don't do, don't do. Be clean, be clean, be clean, be clean. That's what the Pharisees believed. Work, 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 work. So when an unclean spirit is gone out of a man, a man, I'm going to live clean, I'm going to give up cigarettes, I'm going to give up women, I'm going to go to work on time, I'm going to love my family, I'm going to stay home, I'm going to give money to the church, I'm going to do, 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 I'm going to do right, 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 and not good, and not do bad, 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 bad. I'm going to turn over a new leaf. He walketh through dry places. This whole unclean spirit. Seeking rest. And he findeth none. So the unclean spirit comes out of the man. Oh, what am I going to do? That guy was so perfect to be in. Oh. This guy, you know, he ain't doing nothing wrong. Trying not to do anything wrong. Though he forgets. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now notice the cleanness of this man is not by the blood of Jesus. Jesus hasn't died. It's, I'm going to turn over a new leaf. I'm a new man. Look what this program's done for me. See, I got the diploma. I haven't done it for 46 hours. <laughs> Then he saith, this is the unclean spirit, I will return unto my house. <laughs> Alright, let's throw church in that one. The church house. The house is the body, even Jesus says it so. And the body of Christ is a bunch of people together that are saved. And you can have a church house, church meeting, out the middle of uh, a gazebo. 
You can have a church meeting sitting at a table at a flea market. That's not dignified enough. You don't have no same windows. No, but we had the perfect air conditioner. Sometimes you had to hold your Bible, but man, it kept us cool. We were dry. I couldn't do that. You know, there's a point, and I'm going to apply the application. There's a point that, you know, there are some churches, oh, we're going to fast, we're going to have revival, and for one week we're going to clean ourselves up, we're going to clean the church, we're going to clean ourselves, we're going to pray, we're going to do right, and we're going to come in, we're going to have some preaching, we're going to go to the altar, we're going to get down, we're going to pray, we're going to boo-hoo, we're going to cry hoo-hoo, we're going to go out Thursday and, go, and, and tell people about Jesus, we're going to shout amen, hallelujah, glory to God. Come next Sunday. You're the same person you were two weeks ago. The spirit, the unclean spirits went out. You didn't get saved. You cleaned yourself up. He finds it empty, swept, and guarded. Nothing. And listen, as a Christian, if you're going to give up a sin, if you're going to fight a sin, you've got to fill it with something good. You've got to take something that's bad in your life, and you've got to fill it with good. They say when you want to quit smoking, get yourself some candy, get yourself some gum. If you want to give up drinking, you don't want to go into that bar, find yourself another route. The man that says, I'm going to have no more beer, I ain't drinking no more. And he walks daily, every day by the bar that he drank in, the bar that he got drunk in, the bar where he associated himself. He walks by that every single day. One day he's going to take a turn in the wrong direction. And one turn and one drink, he's gone nowhere in his clean life. He's right back where he was. Now, we're talking about reformation. We're not talking about salvation. Salvation, even when you're saved, you got to battle those sins. But doesn't mean you're going to get complete, absolute victory, but... The cleansing of the blood of Jesus. There is no blood of Jesus here. Again, they say, turn a new leaf. I'm a new person. I'll do the 36, please. The 48 bows and blah, 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 blah. I'll get religion. Then go with he, this unclean spirit, and take it himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. So reformation without God, without Jesus, well, Jesus said it will end up seven times as worse than when you were in the first place. When you go to the Baptist church and you said this prayer and you helped the pastor and you sweep the parking lot and you and it's not salvation. And you wake up one day dead in the lake of fire. How about if you do get saved and, and, and you clean up your life? 
and you help your church, and you support your church, and you do the cupcakes for the church, and you sweep the church, and you clean the church, and you, you the church, in the church, in the church, in the pastor, in the pastor, and the people, and the people, but you don't do it for Jesus. And you go up to the judgment seat of Christ, and the fire alarms go off because the smoke is intense, and when the smoke finally clears out, there's nothing but a pile of ashes. And you must walk all the eternity in heaven. And when it comes time, they say, to cast our crown, you have no crown to cast. But I did, I did, I did, I did. But your reformation was you did it for the church, you did it for the pastors, you did it for the people. You didn't do it for Jesus. If it's never done for Jesus, it's a loss. If it was done for Jesus, then it's a win. And they enter in and dwell there. See, they stay. They move in. The last state of the man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be unto this wicked generation. Listen, the Pharisees, they're clean people. Read their lives. Read Paul. They were clean, and they'll be in hell. With the drug pushers, with the addicts, with the prostitutes. But in heaven, there's also going to be drug pushers and prostitutes and the addicts. Because they came to Jesus. Jesus told that woman taking adultery how to get out of reformation. Go and sin no more. Well, I, you know, I got that sin or I do that sin. What do I do? If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Go and sin no more. Plead to the Holy Spirit. Plead to the Father. Plead to Jesus. Again, he's referencing the Pharisees and the scribes. While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren, brothers and sisters, don't believe the Catholic. Oh, you didn't have brothers. You know what his brethren are? They were the Jewish counterparts. You know, like we call each other brothers and sisters in church. Yeah. Desiring to speak with them. Then one said to them, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with them. Jesus, your mother's here. She wants to talk to you. Notice how Mary is still in the background. She ain't pushing her way through. She could be back in the crowd, you know, wave her hand. Jesus. So me, oh, Mary, what you doing here? I gotta talk to my son. Oh, okay. She ain't opening the gates of heaven. She ain't calling down her throne or anything. She ain't sending lightning bolts of oh, Jesus. Jesus talked to her. Like we blow. Must be my mom. Where is she? Ain't, ain't you know that. If there's one thing you can say about Mary, she's humble and she's right. That's why she was chosen. you got to give her some credit. Don't completely rob her because of the Catholic Church. Because she does get saved. She will be in heaven, but she's not going to be on the throne. But he answered and said unto him that told him. Now look, now look at who is my mother. <laughs> That's a good question, God. You don't know. And who are my brethren? Who are my brothers and my sisters? Aunts and uncles. Well, John the Baptist was one of them. And he stretched forth his hand over, excuse me, stretched forth his hand towards his disciples. The disciples. The 
does not say, have you ever read the, this in the Bible? P-E-O-P-L-E. -E. Have you ever read the word people? Is it in the Bible? Well, it's not there. Now, can I make another statement that might shock you? Name me the 12 disciples. Name the ones you can name. What name comes up when you mention the disciples? Judas. Jesus puts forth his hand to the disciples, plural, there they are. There would be Judas. And said, behold, my mother and my brother. Judas? You see, the devil had not entered Judas yet. Now, you can go say, well, you know, Judas had it, and then he lost it. But there's no church aid doctrine. There's no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. It looks like Judas may even die before Jesus died. He could have lost it. That's the Old Testament teaching. But right there, Judas is doing exactly what God wants him to do. When it came to the time that Jesus tells the disciples, somebody's going to betray me, no one had no idea who it was. And when Jesus said, I think John said, well, Lord, tell us who it is. Well, the one I dipped the sop with. He gives the sop to Judas. And like, oh, I guess he grabbed the checkbook to go get some more food or something. It's almost like speaking to the disciple. I mean, the, the Pharisees. They didn't get it. Whosoever shall do the will of my Father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother and sister. Oh, Jesus. Slam the Catholic church, will you? And mother. Now, let me ask you a question. We're in Matthew. Tell me why a Christian or someone in this church age period cannot claim Matthew 12.50. Well, you know, I'm the mother or brother or sister of Jesus. And in church, we call each other brothers or we call, you know, sisters. I'm saved. According to what? Matthew 12, 50. I do the will of the Father. Okay. In the church age period, according to the Apostle Paul, what must you do to be a son of God, not a brother of God, not a sister of God, and not a mother of God? You must put your faith and trust in the death, burial, resurrection, Jonah or Jonas, if you like Hebrew or Greek, to be saved. And when you are saved, you get the Holy Spirit that comes and dwell in you. And when you get the Holy Spirit by your faith and belief in Jesus Christ alone, in the death and burial and resurrection of Jesus, you are able to call God, the Father, Abba, Father, by the adoption. That seems to be locking out of Matthew 12, 50, because we're at the end of the chapter. What would be, lose my, what would be the, the will of the Father presently with Jesus, where he is? Open the book of the law of Moses and obey it. Are we under the law? No. Does, it, does the law make us brother, sister, mother? Really, you're going to claim that verse as your salvation before God. Well, the women get an extra advantage than the men. The men have only to be a brother. They don't have a, they don't have a chance to be a father. Unless you run to the Catholic Church. 
Oh, snap. The women, you can be a sister or a mother. How do you be a sister or mother in the Catholic Church? You could be Sister Sarah, a nun, or you could be Mother Teresa. That the teaching of this verse by Gentiles is the will of the Father is the Catholic Church. The will of the Father of Jesus in his time is the law of Moses. The way a person becomes a child of God, not a brother, not a sister, not a mother, you become a child of God through the adoption by receiving the Holy Spirit being sealed by the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. We just took one verse and we applied it three different ways. Two were wrong, one was right. And he didn't even say where his mother stood. As a matter of fact, he put his mother last. That would upset a Catholic. My, he didn't put Mary first. <laughs> 